Welcome to a new episode of Cold Waters. So, when we last time left off, um, we were still on the hunt for the traitor, and I was moving towards the Danish Straits right now, when I received this press release. Finland Helsinki under fire by armed forces of the USSR. You can see that the text is, um, let's say, challenging. So, yeah, that's one of the things that the Epic Mod developers are still working on. The translations are sometimes apparently done with Google Translate or something like that, and they are difficult to understand. But what this text is trying to say to us, I think, is that NATO is reporting that a major offensive is taking place in the area surrounding Helsinki, Finland. Late at night and early in the morning, tanks, cars and motorized rifle unit divisions of the USSR cross the border of the country in several places. The intruding forces are supported by mobile artillery, helicopters, planes and transports. They are moving forward to key strategic locations. It seems that NATO forces have found a common initiative in most conflict zones. NATO's naval forces support the initiative in the Atlantic while maintaining vital supply lines between Europe and the United States. So if we continue, this is the tactical situation right now that we find ourselves in. Uh, this here is us, by the way. I believe that either this here is the traitor submarine or this one. Both are moving towards the Danish Straits. The issue that I have right now is that there's also a submarine force coming from the other direction and I still only have three torpedoes in my boat that can harm a submarine. That's an issue. By the way, also here on the map you can um, see how the war is progressing. For example, right now Helsinki has been conquered. The Soviet troops are in Finland and they will keep pushing through as we keep sinking enemy submarines and ships. So now let us continue. Alright, we have a new sonar contact at bearing 022. We are at a depth of 183 meters. But we are running at 20 knots because we were hunting that submarine. So um, we are certainly detected. Hmm. Our issue is that we only have three torpedoes left that can be used to engage submarines. And that's really bad. Because once we are run out of those three torpedoes, there's nothing else we can do. And we need, ideally we need two torpedoes to make sure that we kill our mission target. This is a tough one. <sighs> Let's just go. Okay, we have a contact Sierra 1, I immediately need to find out what we are dealing with. I believe it to be a submarine. The question is, what is it? Trying to match the signature. So since I explained in the last episode how the game is played, I don't have to do it this time, which is also nice. I am already past the submarine section. Still I do not know what this is. Interesting. Oh, there we go. It's an oil rig. Okay then. Get a 
150. Занять глубину. Один, два метров. Есть, товарищ командир. And there's nothing else. There's no thermal layer. It's very quiet in the water. And we still cannot hear anything. Okay, this is interesting. Командир, мы выполнены. Идем за левым курсом. Did we just run into a random oil rig? I'll have a look with my periscope to see if there's anything on the surface and to confirm this oil rig contact. And we'll have to see after that what we'll do if there's anything else in the area. This is weird. So we are just rising to the surface. Okay. So as we saw in the last episode, the Charlie, the Charlie One class that we have here, is uh, quite capable and can also be used very well for different tasks. We were able to hunt submarines with it, we will certainly be able to hunt ships with this and I think this will be a lot of fun to to use the submarine throughout the war. Okay, we are now coming up to the surface. We'll be in a position to deploy our periscope very shortly. Let us raise the ESM mast first. I need to get up to 14 meters, okay. ESM mast is up, no radar signals detected. Raise the periscope. So the oil rig should be there it is. Yeah indeed, an oil rig. Nothing else. Let us clear our baffles. So clearing our baffles means that clearing our baffles means that I'm turning to make sure that there's nothing behind my boat because anything that is behind me I cannot hear since I do not have a towed sonar. So, from time to time, turning around and clearing the baffles is uh, important and useful. Let's use some time compression here to speed this up. There's nothing behind us, apparently. New contact, Sierra 2. And I know this is no surface contact because there was nothing on the surface. So this might be what we are hunting. Dreadnought. Dreadnought. Uh, we have a Sierra 3. Uh, Nautilus. Uh, 
командир докладывает гидроакустику Сиера 3 о подлом как подводная лодка. You know what? This is not my mission target. These two boats. They are not my mission target. These are not the traitors that I'm hunting. So fighting them would only waste my torpedoes. Therefore I'm turning away and getting getting away from them. Going down to 200 meters. And using time compression. So this might uh, be a fight where no shots are fired. So right now I will cut the video. Командир, so I'll cut the video and I'll come. I'll be back if anything happens or when we have been able to evade them. So see you soon. Okay, welcome back. So I was able to evade them. Uh, no contact, no further contact was established, and I can leave the combat. Yeah, a dreadnought and the Nautilus. Continue the mission. So yeah, this was not my target. There's a submarine directly on me. Fuck! God damn it. I hope that was not the mission target. I hope this here is the mission target. This could very well be our mission target. We have a new sonar contact bearing 271 designated Sierra 1. We are at 18 meters depth. Our speed is just 5 knots. No thermal layer, nothing. All hands man battle stations. So Sierra 1. Sierra 2. Let's start with number 1. What is this? A dreadnought, another one. It has a very similar signature, but it doesn't quite fit. It's a Valiant. I don't know. This doesn't look like my target. I expect my target to be a Soviet submarine. Not British submarines. Or are they? Is the traitor aboard one of those? Let me s uh, I cannot review the mission orders. Okay. I'm not sure. I'm really not sure. Yeah, the traitor might just be on the submarine instead of being the submarine. Since we are already up here, let's check if there's anything on the surface. It's a nice morning. Awesome. Or oh, evening. I think it's evening. That's okay though. No, it's morning. Raising the ESM mast. No emissions on the surface. Icebergs. Lots of icebergs. Nothing else really. Ok, 
Okay then. Let's go D. I think I will attack these targets. I'll dedicate one torpedo to each target. And if one of them needs finishing off with a second torpedo, then I can provide that. The seafloor is at 1059 meters, so if one of them should have heavy flooding and go down um, after just one hit, it will certainly be crushed. But I'm... Now I believe it's possible that my target is aboard one of these submarines. And therefore I need to sink them. If I'm wrong, then the target will escape and my mission will fail. I'll just have to see. Anyway, um, these submarines did come from the Arctic Circle. So they came from the expected direction. But still, I'm, I'm not sure. We'll see. I'll just... I'll sink them and then we'll know more. We'll know if better for next time. I'm already getting a good solution on the Dreadnought, but apparently, if uh, the position of the Dreadnought is correct, it's about to detect me. Let's slow down. I don't know if this will make any difference. This crew is now barely turning, and we are s we are really deep. The dreadnought is somewhere above us, and my hope is that I'll manage to get. Yeah, there it is. We should be able to view it any moment. Yeah, there it is. It even cavitated for a moment. Silly dreadnought. Commander, my I'll try to get behind the dreadnought into its baffles so that it doesn't detect my torpedo launch. That's my goal right now. For that to work. I'm just going to have to move slow. Keep adjusting my heading, pointing my boat straight at them. Just moving very slowly. They're going at a speed of 10 knots. They must have some. Yeah, I cannot read that. But the sonar must be quite good on their boat. If they might be able to pick me up here. Still, it's not sure that they'll be able to. So for now... just doing what we can to stay undetected until we are in its baffles and then we can fire a torpedo. We are four kilometers away. Yeah, 4.2 kilometers, I can also read it here. I still do not have a precise position on the Valiant, but I know its course and its course does not support my plan to get behind the Dreadnought. 
we'll have to see about that. I'll have a good solution on the Valiant uh, very shortly. By the way, the Valiant has a towed sonar array, as you can see here. So a towed sonar array is basically... Yeah, we cannot see the Valiant, but... If I had a towed sonar array and I could deploy it, then... There would be a long cable deployed behind me. And in that cable I integrated basically hydrophones. Microphones that are able to pick up sound. The advantage of such a towed sonar array is that it allows me to hear things behind my submarine. So right now I cannot do that because there's this screw back here which makes noise and which also prevents hydrophones to be installed in this area because well, they are useless as soon as the screw turns. Such a cable circumvents that. Now I have a position on the Valiant. Nice. It's on the surface. Also traveling at 10 knots. Range 8 kilometers. Dreadnought can still almost hear me. Let's increase my speed by just a little bit. Keep turn. Are not as sensitive anymore. So this is good. We are just creeping into position. It also seems to be turning slightly, so this helps us. If it turns this way, then we will be in its baffles and we'll be able to fire. Commander, my Don't mind me, I am not here. You are perfectly safe up there. Oh, he's also down here. Okay then. How about the Valiant sensors? Yeah, the toad array is dangerous to me. Once I fire, the Valiant will pick it up. There's nothing I can do about that. But at least the Dreadnought won't be able to. And this might um, really screw with her counterfire. This is my goal right now. So, I wonder what kind of range these torpedoes have range about about 15 kilometers I'm thinking should I fire on the Valiant or not I should not because it's too far away and I also must not forget that I do not have wire guided torpedoes that means once I fire them it's out of my hands. That's bad. Because mm, even if I fire the Dreadnought, I fire the torpedo and until the torpedo gets to its activation point, the Dreadnought has turned away and yeah, torpedo misses. And I have only three of those. So this is a problem. Ideally, I would need to get closer. But getting closer 
without being detected doesn't seem to be possible because of the Valiant Toad sonar array. It's still up there on the surface. But if I'm continuing on this course, then I'll be in the Dreadnoughts baffled shortly. It might give me a few moments where the Dreadnought doesn't know what's going on. Let's try to increase our speed, but uh, that means we have to... Let's use some time acceleration for the moment. I'm in its baffles. So you can see the sensor information of the Dreadnought is really bad right now. That means I'm in its baffles. Okay, we will open fire now. Mm -hmm. I will shoot the torpedo actually to a zigzag pattern. I will shoot my torpedo like this. Now the Valiant heard that, yeah, that comes to counter fire. Still, they might not know my precise position. This is what I'm counting. Yeah, these torpedoes, the um, SAET-60Ms, they can only be used for surface ships. Yeah, the Valiant fired a spread of torpedoes. The Dreadnought still doesn't seem to know what's going on around it. Which is exactly what I hoped. So once this torpedo gets into uh, gets to its activation point, it will um, go active with its active sonar. Then the dreadnought will know for sure. But right now the dreadnought apparently, I think all it knows is the valiant started pinging like crazy. It fired a salvo of torpedoes, so there's definitely something going on. They just don't know what. Which I imagine is quite uh, unsettling. Let's speed up. Let's get out of the way of this. The dreadnought. It's still moving at 10 knots. Yeah, they, have, they have no idea what's going on. This is good. This is great. This is great. And the torpedo is getting closer. Let's have a look at my torpedo. So yeah, the Soviets in uh, the late 60s definitely had the better torpedoes. Um, the NATO torpedoes, the American torpedoes, were generally slow, had some problems with uh, their computer systems, if you can call that thing a computer. But they were slow, that was the main problem. Okay, the dreadnought now definitely knows that something's up. It's dropping countermeasures. It has not gone active though. There's no active sonar banging away. My torpedo should be almost at its activation point. He's running towards the surface. Does he want to surface? Is he? Yeah, he is. So the dreadnought is actually surfacing. Interesting tactic, I have to say. Okay, they deployed another noisemaker right on the surface. My torpedo still is not active. That worries me. Oh 
Please don't miss. Come on, go active. Go active, come on. Nah, it will miss. It will miss. Oh no. I didn't set it up well enough. It will certainly miss the target. I still have to get away from the torpedoes. My torpedo missed. Did I set it so badly? Yeah, now it goes active. Damn. That's bad. That's really bad. It's not even gonna pick up the countermeasures. It activated way too late. To be of any use. Ah oh, no, that's not good. Uh, but at least the dreadnought is getting closer to me, which is something. And it's on the surface. This thing is on the surface. Now look, this might be a desperate move. But I'm gonna try it. I need to get above 108 meters. Let's do that right now. Oh, and also this dreadnought might get into trouble with its allies to ally torpedoes. Yeah, sure. But if he thinks he can stay on the surface and is safe there, then he gives me the opportunity to use surface running torpedoes against him. Thank you very much. Yeah, the torpedoes are activating. This is an interesting development. Shame that this one didn't didn't activate yet. Um, it will actually run past the dreadnought, so yeah, that didn't work. But you can see where the torpedoes activated, so the Valiant didn't really know where I fired from. It just fired torpedoes down the bearing, and they are activating way too early. Okay then. Let's try this. Against the dreadnought. I have to fire like this. Okay. Let's... Let's do it. Get away, now the dreadnought knows where I am. Now it's firing. The question is, is it diving or not? It's not diving. It's not diving and its fire is also extremely imprecise. It didn't really pick up where I'm firing from. Let's increase speed. Let's reload another torpedo. This one already activated. Yeah, the dreadnought just, just fired in the general direction. But if he keeps this course and he stays on the surface, then this torpedo here might become a problem for him. Right now it's still running deep, but once it activates it will rock up to the surface. We'll see what happens then. We'll just see what happens. It's certainly interesting. I don't know if I should fire one of the wake-homing torpedoes at him. Wake-homing torpedoes are evil. If used against surface ships, because there's, there's not much a surface ship can do to evade one of those. It cannot hide its wake. It would have to come to a full stop and how would the surface ship know what kind of torpedo it's fighting against? 
I don't think they expect wake homing torpedoes. And that's then their doom. Okay. I need to speed up more if I want to get past this torpedo. Let's go deep. We stopped cavitating and we lost our torpedo, unfortunately. But it was on a good way to target. So let's have a look at our Nautilus friend. And see if there's anything coming up from below him. Now these torpedoes, they do not have an active guidance. Oh, there it is, there it is, there it is. This is my torpedo, it's coming in. It's got him. Oh, this is awesome. Running on the surface was a mistake, buddy. Running on the surface was a horrible mistake. Now, we need to take care of the Valiant. But first we need to get out of the path of this torpedo here. Once we have done that... And I already have a plan on how I will do that. I will use one of my decoy torpedoes. Isn't it a nice boat? Are we out of its way yet? Let's keep running for a little bit longer. I have a torpedo ping down here. That's my torpedo actually, okay. And run past this torpedo. Just making sure that it doesn't hit. No, it's actually circling, okay. Will it pick me up? That's the question right now. No, it won't. Okay, all is well. All is well. The Valiant must still be making a lot of noise if I can hear it while going at 25 knots. Let's get closer. Let's keep running. It's going approximately at a speed of 30 knots. It's now slowing down. Let me actually do something. Let's drift. hope that this will give me the possibility to get a good fix on its position. I need to know where it is and what it's doing. It 
fired. But I know where it is. Oh. Oh, something is not right, my boy. Oh, you are very deep. Oh, and you fired a torpedo that detonated immediately because you are too deep to fire torpedoes safely. Oh, that's a shame. Why are you so deep, though? What's going on? It, it looks like it has trouble keeping its depth. Is it damaged somehow? It might be somehow damaged. I'll use time compression and we'll see what happens. Now it's rising, okay. It fired another torpedo which again detonated after leaving the tube. It is still rising, though it just fired another torpedo at me. Again! Detonation after leaving the tube. Okay. I did not experience this before. So the AI does seem to have some problem. In this mission here. But now it's... Now it's at a safe depth, and this torpedo is going for me. Definitely, it knows exactly where I am. So I'll do him the honors and shoot back. With a torpedo that is going in a zigzag pattern and will activate after just two kilometers. And I will go to flank speed and turn off to the side to get out of the way of the torpedo. The Valiant will have to maneuver very shortly. There it already goes. I don't know, it seems to have some kind of problem. Maybe these explosions, uh, these exploding torpedoes, damaged the Valiant. Maybe it somehow damaged itself. It's very possible. But my torpedo is coming in now. Is it looking noise makers? Uh, by doing such a sharp turn, he has most certainly broken any wire that he might have had. So this torpedo will not be following me. And since he fired the torpedo at depth, I will actually go up to the surface. My torpedo is still... Now they are passing each other, that's awesome. Have a look at this. Cool. Yeah, we are levitating, doesn't matter. My torpedo is still going for its target. And it's gone active. And it's picked up something. I think it picked up one of the countermeasures. This is fine. There is the submarine. Uh, the torpedo has picked up... I believe the other countermeasure. Oh, it's just picked up the new countermeasure that the... Submarine dropped. At great depth, I might add. Oh, this my torpedo might actually also explode from the depth. Ah, oh, no, maybe not. Soviet torpedoes, they are not bad. Yeah, it passed the noisemaker. It's now turning around. Something exploded. I think that was the enemy's torpedo. Which I don't mind at all. <laughs> they have some problems with their torpedoes. I like it. I will go to silent running now. I will just observe its struggle. Oh, 
this torpedo is going deeper with the noisemaker, my torpedo might really do explode. Which would be unfortunate because then I would have only one torpedo remaining. Let me actually turn towards this point. Start getting closer in case I need to fire my second torpedo. It's going for something. It's going again for the noisemaker. Where is the submarine? There it is. There it is. There it is. Oh, it's going down. They are going deep. Jesus, look at this. Will they, be, will they be able to recover? Okay, my torpedo was not able to dive as steeply. How deep can the Valiant go? It's a good question. Measures everywhere. Now um, I hope my torpedo will pick up after passing through the next countermeasure. There he is. Up there. Yeah. He's he's really using its his dive planes to the to the maximum effect constantly shifting from uh, deep water to shallow water just trying to outrun my torpedo yeah he's right above the torpedo now okay torpedo is past the countermeasure and coming back around Maybe in time to go after the submarine. Yeah, the torpedo has acquired something. Unfortunately, that is the countermeasure that the boat just dropped. Look at him go. He's really doing everything he can to evade this torpedo. You know what? I have to shoot the yeah, one as well. Right. To maximize my chances of hitting. Should I or should I wait? How long does my torpedo Where is he? He's again gone deep. Quite another noisemaker. But to no effect. Circling back around. Look at this. This this fight has been going on for some time now. Ah, but he's coming back to the surface, so the torpedo might actually be now going after him. Yes, I believe it is. Or is it? No, it isn't. Again, going after the countermeasures. Stop going after the countermeasures, you silly torpedo. There's your target. Go after him. Come now, turn around and go get him. We just dropped another countermeasure. There we go, again going after some countermeasure. After the new one that he dropped. Do I really have to? I have to. I have to shoot now. Tube 
squeeze out. That was my last torpedo. That was my last torpedo. Ah well, what can you do? I hope that by having two torpedoes in the water against him, he won't be able to evade both at the same time. We'll see about that though. Okay, he's coming back up to the surface. He's below my torpedo. Somewhere. Below it, I cannot look downwards without having the camera go up. I cannot even see him. Jesus Christ. This is tense. This is really tense. So, my torpedo is activated. It's doing a zigzag pattern now. And it will... Close in. It picked up. I think it picked up one of the countermeasures. So, another torpedo joins the party. There it is. Go after him. Torpedo. Okay, complete another full circle and then go after him. Come on. Okay, there we go, there we go. Uh, no, there we don't go. He's turning into... Damn, he knows his stuff. He really knows his stuff. Another countermeasure. And my torpedo is going straight... After what? Is it going after him or after one of the countermeasures? It's going after one of the countermeasures. He's just filling the water with countermeasures. But eventually he will run out. Okay, okay, okay. I might have one torpedo coming in. There we go, there we go, there we go. Ah, oh, Almost. Almost. Still, with two torpedoes against him, this has become a lot more difficult. There goes one torpedo. It's going after the countermeasure. Wow, he's really putting the submarine to good use. It's it's quite amazing to see this actually. Now I might fire also the, the passive homing torpedo into him because <laughs> to be honest if he happens to be on the surface when that torpedo arrives then <laughs> I have a chance. There are my torpedoes down there going after countermeasures again both against the same countermeasure, both turning in the same direction, which is actually not good. But now both turning back. But they are below him, it seems. So I'm not sure that they can pick him up. He is going down again, though. So who knows, maybe I'm lucky. Okay, my first torpedo detonated. It's gone now. There we go. Come on, come on, torpedo. This will be a hit. Yeah. One hit. I got one hit in. He's shooting at me. Of bloody course he is. Oh, are you too deep? Oh, he damaged himself even more. He might be going down now. He might actually be going down. He's blowing ballast, trying to get up to the surface. But he seems to be flooding. He seems to have heavy flooding on board. 
What am I doing still on the surface? Get down there. He's coming back up. He's really doing it. He's coming back up. The flooding must not be intense enough. But it's fine. I still have a plan. I really do. Now he's somewhere down there to my one o'clock. And he's still coming up towards the surface. If he surfaces, I would get him. No problem. If he doesn't surface, well, I'll think of something. He's going hard for me though. Nah, he's going for the surface. He wants to be out of here. Yeah, he's surfacing. And by doing that, he has just doomed himself. The crew of this submarine should get off board now. Because the next thing that'll happen is I'll stick one of these torpedoes into him. Will he stay on the surface or will he be going down again? Let's use some time compression and see what happens. Uh, let's come up to 50 meters to make sure that my doesn't have to climb a Okay. Time compression. Yeah. So this is it. You are going down now. Commander, what the hell is this torpedo doing? Jesus Christ. It went off in a direction that was not anticipated. So actually I have to fire another torpedo. Which I did not plan on doing. <sighs> okay, there we go. We are shooting away from the torpedo. Now this torpedo is going where I pointed it. So, wake homing torpedoes. They are awesome. Because what will happen is, the torpedo will activate any moment. There we go. It's going back, it's going up to the surface. It will cross behind the submarine. It will detect the submarine's wake. And then it will follow that wake to its source. You will see. It should now turn around. Oh god, please turn around. What he... Oh, It did not pick up the wake. This is bad. Let's try my last torpedo. If this doesn't work. Short activation... Torpedo, go! Now I understand, the activation point is so close to the submarine that he has to turn tighter. Oh, I just wasted this torpedo. Look at this, oh my god, this is tragic. And I'm out of reloads, I'm completely out. I have a submarine sitting here next to me and I can do nothing. Wait a moment. This torpedo has picked up something. 
There we go. There we go. This torpedo has picked up the wake. Somehow. Oh, there we go. That was a fight. Wow. That was really a fight. That was a fight for sure. And I'm completely out of ordnance. Well, I still have my missiles. But, um, uh, I'm going home. I think I'm going home. Can I leave combat? No, still weapons nearby. Okay, we'll use a bit of time acceleration to allow my torpedoes to get away from me. Nah, no, not enough. Then we we'll leave combat and we'll have a look. Was this our mission target or not? No, still not able to leave combat. Still weapons nearby. Let's wait for a few more seconds. There we go. Leave combat. Sunk a Dreadnought, sunk a Valiant, almost nothing left, experience gained. Oh no. This was not my target. I have to abort mission. So yeah. I have to abort mission and return to Momansk. There's nothing I can do here. There are too many enemy submarines in the area and I have no torpedoes left. I failed the mission. Okay, let's get out of here. We got intercepted. Oh no. Okay. I'll make a cut here. This has uh, been going on for long enough. And we will see if I can get out of this situation in the next episode. I might be doomed. See you soon. Goodbye.